Welcome back. So today we're going to read this story title, Looking at Lincoln. So let's go ahead and get started. Looking at Lincoln, written and illustrated by Myra Kalman. One day while walking through the park on my way to breakfast, I saw a very tall man. He reminded me of someone, but I could not think of who. At the coffee shop, I ordered pancakes. They were delicious. We paid with a Lincoln and two Washingtons. And then I remembered the man I had seen looked exactly like Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States. Who was he? I went to the library to find out. Abraham Lincoln was such an amazing man that there were over 16,000 books written about him. I wanted to read them all, but I got lost in photos of his unusual face. I stared at one. I could look at him forever. He was born in a small log cabin in Kentucky on February 12, 1809. His family was poor. Abe was a dreamer. He did not like to do chores. He loved to read. He was lucky his stepmother loved him like crazy and he adored her. She looked so stern, but she let him dream and read as much as he wanted. He went to school for only one year, but he was curious and taught himself many things. They had hardly any supplies and of course, no electricity. Abraham spent many hours reading by the fire's glow. One day he was kicked in the head by a mule. He slept for two days. When he woke up and grew up, he decided to be a lawyer. He did like to argue. He lived in Springfield, Illinois and got a reputation as a smart and honest man. They called him Honest Abe. He had family that he loved very much. His wife, Mary, who was very short, and four sons. They laughed and had lots of friends and even ran around a little wild. I wonder if Mary and Abraham had nicknames for each other. Like, did she call him Linky? Did he call her a little plumpy, maybe? Abe worked hard and became interested in the government. He decided he would run for president. And on March 4th, 1861, he was inaugurated president of the United States. On the day he was elected, I bet Mary made him his favorite vanilla cake, but maybe he forgot to eat his slice. He was often too busy thinking to eat. Lincoln wore a very tall hat. With his hat on, he was seven feet tall. He wrote many notes and stuffed them inside of his hat. What was he thinking about? He was thinking about democracy, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution created by the founders of this country. He was thinking about freedom and doing good for all mankind. And maybe he was also thinking about getting a birthday present for his little son, maybe a whistle or pickup sticks. What did he love? He loved his dog Fido. I think Fido was cross-eyed. He loved apples, Cox's orange pippins, white pippins, wine sap, Benoni. He always had an apple on his desk. He loved music. He loved Mozart, especially his opera, The Magic Flute. But mostly he loved people. His family, of course, but all people. He wanted them to live well. He wanted justice and truth. The country was in trouble and headed for war. After hundreds of years of slavery, people were saying enough. There were courageous people who fought for liberty like Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass, who had been a slave until he ran away to the North. Both of them met with Lincoln and spoke of the flight of slaves. Lincoln hated slavery and wrote to a friend, if slavery is not wrong, nothing is wrong. During his presidency, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, the first official step toward freeing millions of slaves. It was a difficult time to be president, the Southern states, the Confederacy, wanted their own country where slavery was allowed. Lincoln said, no, we must stay one country. The Northern states, the Union, believed that slavery should be abolished, and so they went to war. In a museum, I saw the uniform of one of the first soldiers killed in the Civil War. Here is a bullet hole at the point of his heart. There were 14 brass buttons on the front of his tunic. One was shot away, 13 brass buttons remain. The soldier's name was Elmer Ephraim Ellsworth. Terrible things happened in a war. The Civil War ground on. Lincoln went to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, the site of a big battle. Thousands of soldiers were buried there, many with just a number on their grave. On that sad land, 
Lincoln gave one of his greatest speeches, the Gettysburg Address. It was short, only 272 words, ending with, Government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The war finally ended in 1865. Almost a million people had been killed or wounded. The North had won. The people had suffered greatly, but now it was time to rejoice and start to rebuild the country with Lincoln leading the way. But it was not to be. After the agony of war, Lincoln wanted to lighten the mood. He took his wife to see a funny play. During the play, he was shot, murdered by a wretched man who did not want slavery to end. Lincoln had been rocking in his chair. People carried him across the street to the home of a friend. He died the next morning, April 15, 1865. He was 56 years old. The news spread. People across the land wept with grief for their fallen leader. But a great man is never really gone. Abraham Lincoln will live forever. And if you go to Washington, D.C. in the spring, you can walk through the cherry blossoms and visit him. At his memorial, you can read the words he wrote near the end of the war, with malice toward none, with charity for all. And you can look into his beautiful eyes. Just look. And that is the end. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. And once again, I was able to visit the Lincoln Memorial. So here's a few pictures that I took. And one of the neat things about the Lincoln Memorial is from where Abraham Lincoln sits, he's able to see the reflection pool and he's also able to see the Washington Monument. So just great views all around. And right in front of the Lincoln Memorial is where Martin Luther King gave his I Have a Dream speech. So it's pretty awesome stuff. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this book and I'll talk to you later. Bye.